Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we'll be having a look back over my vintage pickups for the month of February 2024, including some fantastic stuff from Dorset Bob and a fair batch of vintage penguin stuff, as well as some incredible viewer donations from my friend Paul. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Right then, starting off, we've got bidding at Bridge now. Um, the uh, Penguin chap, this Penguin Specialist book dealer, was having a bit of a sale on and um, of Penguin handbooks, and I was able to pick up a fair old batch at one and two pounds a pot. Um, I mean, they're not all mint, but they are all first printings, and uh, you know, to be honest with these handbooks, that's sort of all I want. And this one is bidding at Bridge, which is, I've got to say, something I've never really played much. Um, I've watched it being played, Bridge, but I've never got into it myself. So that's Penguin Handbook 106. Uh, so there's a few of these today uh, this is 105 at your service these are 1960s ones and I like the Penguin Handbook series I mean the early ones are absolutely gorgeous and uh, the ones from the 40s and 50s have all got bespoke covers you know really nice illustrated jackets on them these are of their time you know um, I'm not so keen on the gardening ones which are a bit plain but these other subjects, there's like three on chess alone, and I quite enjoy chess. Uh, but there's other ones on card games and things like that. Some very, very interesting subjects, and a couple by Len Dayton, one of which we will see today, actually. Um, his Action Cookbook, which is in this uh, weird oblong format. So I did pick one of them up off uh, the Penguin Chap as well. There we are, so I've just had a little bit of a, a pencil mark in there. And once we've been through internally, we'll give all these books a brush and uh, we'll also give everything a polish as well. Improve your athletics. One, track events. Okay, now I see this has got a little bit of um, spine damage down the bottom there, which is going to need a little bit of re-gluing, but we should be able to manage that. Okay, right, well, we'll glue this one as we go along. Now, for actually gouging out glue to put on the end of my little thing, I've got a bit of an older Pritt stick here that I can just put some glue on the end on. Because this is multi-layered here. This is a multi-faceted repair job. So we'll need to do it bit by bit. Okay, that's the first layer. Just about. There we are. So the spine, or the cover itself, is about three layers long, or deep rather. So three ply. And each bit has got curled up, unfortunately. So we need to sort of get it under each level, push it down, and then do it again. That might actually be enough. Almost. Still a tiny bit, the very last bit now, I think. Quite fiddly, this one. There we are. So, speaking of Penguin, um, since I last did one of these, I have appeared on the, uh, the She Done It podcast. Now, this is uh, run by Caroline. She's been doing it for five years. And uh, it's a podcast about the classic era of crime, the Golden Age, which is the uh, interwar years, shall we say. And um, I went on talking about Green Penguins, the early days of Penguin books and Penguin crime. And uh, this week, as I filmed this, she's just launched her Green Penguin book club. 
So uh, if you fancy, it's just, what that is, is basically she's going to read all the, the, the Green Penguin crime books in chronological order, starting with book number five from the main series, which is uh, The Unpleasantness at the Blower Club, which I'm reading at the moment and very much enjoying. So if you fancy uh, checking that out, plus my episode, um, there will be some links down below. Uh, but just look up She Done It on any podcast app that you might have including here on youtube and if you're in the uk bbc sounds and uh, you'll uh, be able to check that out now i bought um a batch of raymond chandler's and these are uh, 60s editions i don't think any of them are first printings maybe a couple of them um, i've got most of them anyway so this is a multi multiple reprint but they've all got unique jackets and i really like the, the 60s crime design and um these books i do read quite a bit so uh this one's probably a first i would think yeah this is a first from 1964. smart alec kill i never read this one love these designs alan spain did that one i think we might have one or two by romic marber which is great <clears throat> the little sister this is uh not sure if this is a reprint or not yeah this was a reprint as well but they were in a very very reasonable lot worked out about 50p a book i think so i thought i'm not turning that down even if they are reprints although i just can't afford the space to collect all the different editions or different covers like i do with pound books this is a reprint as well um, but when they are significantly different, like that would be different than the topographical one, then I'm going to keep them. <clears throat> a few more here. Pearls are a nuisance. It's a classic sort of 60s photograph cover, isn't it? Bob Brooks. That's the reprint as well. 1966. This one's definitely a reprint because it's Penguin 652 was the original, which of course I've got. John Sewell. But this is lovely. These 60s editions are just great. I really, really like them. Then we got one more, which is a playback. So quite a nice batch of uh, Raymond Chandler's there. I thought at least one was by Romick Marber, but they're not. And that was the reprint from 65. Very, very nice though. I do love those. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you was this. This was given to me by my brother-in-law. He is a, uh, a carpenter and um, he makes bespoke guitars of all things. And uh, he's actually got a YouTube channel himself. And he's got an incredible bit of kit where he can like laser engrave bits of uh, bits of wood so this is i think it's mahogany absolutely gorgeous um i mean it really is but give you an idea of the size if you compare that with a normal paperback so he's got me this one for the studio and for my eventual library when i move house it's big it's really big thick chunky bed wood um, and he can do all sorts so he can do these to order so if you are interested you know do drop me a line um once i've got a few because what i'm going to get him to make are ones which are paperback size, so a bit smaller. I get him to do some of the older logos, like the old Penguin logo, Digit Books, Badger, Panther. I think they'll look really, really nice in my uh, in my eventual library. Um, so I have no idea really how much even this is going to cost. But if you're interested um, for your library, um, he can do uh, bespoke orders to well, to order. So uh, I just thought I'd throw that one in there. But absolutely fantastic! It's lovely that piece of kit. Right. Now we've got a few more. Now, I picked up another little batch of Ruth Rendell's. Now, I wasn't particularly looking to um, collect Ruth Rendell or anything, but I bought it for this lot here, which is one of the Panther crime bands that I needed. Um, and this is Ruth Rendell's second book, To Fear a Painted Devil, I believe. It's published by Panther. This is a first printing, 1967. And these all worked out, once again, it was about... But ACP a book. Um, I, there was more than this um, than what I'm going to show you. I kept all the first printings and uh, there was a few second printings and reprints that I gave my mum, who's actually a big Ruth Rendell stroke Barbara Vine 
fan but this one i couldn't find any sort of mention I, i've done my own sort of panther books checklist and uh, you may have seen the recent video i did on it but i was really really pleased to get that crime band because when i didn't have and then evidently panther continued publishing ruth rendell um through the early 70s early to mid 70s in fact so these are all um later ones slightly later but they are all first printings as well so this is from 1970 it's got the panther oblique there and it looks like she's holding a corgi or a dinky car there or he actually looking at the hairy arm somebody is holding a corgi car there so what is going on what is going on the best man to die so i said these were cheap and cheerful and really nice first print paperbacks from a real solid author so i was absolutely delighted to add these to my uh panther collection certainly becoming one of my all-time favorite publishers i've not picked up much beyond the science fiction but there's um some beautiful editions of chester hines that i'd like to get my hands on um here we've got some more uh, handbooks here how to drive safely and of course <clears throat> in a minute we'll have all those books from uh, dorset bob um so bob picked up a huge collection of uh vintage sf and fantasy and uh steve and i steve the outlaw bookseller and I got to uh, pretty much have a look. He'd only had the collection a week or so, and we were able to have first digs. So if you've not looked at that video, um, please do. And Bob is going to be taking the collection to the London Paperback Show, which is rapidly coming up. So um, there will probably be one more pickups video, possibly, before the London Paperback Show. But if not, this may be the last time I remind you of it, except to the fact that I am going to do a dedicated preview video of it. So I uh, just like a few thoughts, things that I'm looking forward to doing, stuff that I'm looking hopefully to find. And uh, just to make sure everyone possible is aware that it's coming up because I want as many people there as possible. And I shall be there um, helping out on Bob's stall and filming, of course. Steve will be there the same. So if you want to meet either of us, that's definitely the place to do it. Right, playgroups. OK, and I said a slightly later one slightly more unusual a little bit past my usual sort of cut off period this but doesn't matter too much the single woman's guide to pregnancy and parenthood yep so some of these uh, handbooks they can be strange old titles but how many people really collect them or even save them you know that's the thing to think about here's something a bit earlier the slimmer's cookbook handbook number 91 1963 this one mm -hmm. now here's that slightly more unusual one it's the uh, oblong uh, Len Dayton's Action Cookbook. It's been reprinted a few times. Um, this one isn't mint, but it's it's certainly not bad. Um, he did one other one in this format called Oue la Garlique, which is um, Len Dayton's French cookery. Um, but yeah, it's quite nice. You know, it's just got recipes in. Ten and sixpence. There we are, 1967. There is a hardback as well. Of course, Len Dayton... Uh, used to work for penguin back in the day as a designer so something non-penguin now a little old white circle so this is the first white circle i've picked up in quite some time and it's a western and look at that it's um the tiny bit the corner of the cover it's come away so i've got some good print stick here i'm just gonna whack a bit in there and that should hopefully be enough to glue that down. The Tin God of the Twisted of Twisted River. There we are. These are very, very delicate. They're all sort of uh these are pre-war titles. Um they don't tend to turn up. I've only ever got one other Western in my entire collection, and I th I don't think Collins did that many at all. It's got a looks like it's got a shilling on the front. I don't know if I can get that off or not. This is one I got off eBay, so I didn't pay much for it. It's like two fifty. 
So I thought, well, that's all right. I have had my uh, Collins books out recently because I've recently bagged them all. So what I'll do to keep that collection all bagged, I shall bag this one once we've given it the brush along the top and that. Um, this is one I shall slip into a bag so it can join the rest of them. And uh, I just need to make a note of it. The Wild West Club, the Tin God of Twisted River. Just trying to see the number, which I can't quite make out. It might be one, one seven seven. Thankfully, I do have um, a list of sorts that I can resort to. Um, right now, a couple of uh, picadors, early picadors. The so picador, of course, was the sort of upmarket literary fiction offshoot of palm books, which started in 1972. I've got a real soft spot for these. I absolutely love them. I'd love to collect them really seriously but they just do not turn up um i've been actively looking for about a year and i've had one little haul where i picked up about 10 in a shop and they were like you know like a pound each sort of thing um and they were the more common ones but they were all mint like first printings so i'm tr i'd love to basically i'd love to get the first few years of uh picador licked if i could um but there's some scarce ones in there. it's as simple as that um some early angela carter and what have you but what i've got i'm pleased with um i have got which hasn't arrived yet actually i've got a, a tolkien companion from like 1976 which i'm looking forward to having a look through didn't even know it existed so this one this picador edition 1974 so it is the the first picador a beckett more pricks than kicks well there you go got a bit of um some fade in there but it really is a really gorgeous. There's a great book on almost on collecting Picador, really, but it's other things as well. It's by a chap called Nicholas Royal, and it's called White Spines, and I massively recommend it. It's really, really entertaining. Apart from his stories of hunting these down and some of the later king penguins, he he has this thing where when he finds something inside a book, like we might find a book, bus ticket or a letter, um, he calls it an insertion, and where he's found a book which has got someone's name in name and address in he tries to track them down and sends them back the book <laughs> it's really funny um so anyway look out for white spines um it's a great great read once again if i remember i'll try and put a link to it so you can at least look it up on amazon because it's a such an entertaining read and um i did cover um nicholas's picador collection in one of my collection videos a long long time ago um and uh well you see he's just got about three or four floor to ceiling bookcases full of these lovely early picadors you know so uh, that's a really nice one that's one that i am looking forward to reading i said they hardly ever turn up unfortunately but they're lovely all the same right now the next batch we've got is once again from one of my most generous channel members and uh, a supporter of the channel for quite a while now and that's my friend Paul Barnes and Paul sent down we sent down one book which is this one here it's by John Wyndham a plan for chaos now this is published uh, by the Liverpool University Press uh, somewhere I'm actually heading to in, in uh, uh, March actually going to Liverpool for a couple of days with the wife and um yeah, thus begins Plan for Case, a resurgent Nazi thriller written shortly after the Second World War by a Reserve Army signalman who would become famous in 1951 as John Wyndham, author of The Day of the Triffids. He wrote Plan alongside Triffids and intended it as his follow-up novel. Instead, readers have had to wait more than 50 years for the present first-time publication. Well, uh, here we are. So, um, Paul had a duplicate copy of this one. So I was very, very pleased indeed. So this has very swiftly made its way to the top of my uh, to-be-read pile. So uh, absolutely fantastic. I don't know a great deal about it, um, but I'm very much now looking forward to reading it. Um, and Paul has also, and I don't know where he gets this stuff from, has also sent me a whole pile of penguin catalogues and things like that, ephemera, basically. And he was wondering if uh, some of it I might have, some of it I haven't. Um, I possibly have got some of these old catalogues there, so some of them might be doubles, but on the whole, this is pretty much all new to me. Now that one, I'm pretty sure I have got. However, this, this is, um, 
This I haven't. This is a uh, Penguin's Planet Puffin, so June 62. So these are sort of similar format. So they're sort of concertina down. And these look like, well, they would have been monthly, monthly catalogues, wouldn't they? Look at this. I just love this stuff. I really do. This one's got a few annotations here, look. Someone's, uh, and the buildings of England, someone's checked it for their buildings of England stock. <laughs> it's just magic. I just love these. Now, I don't think I've got any in this sort of format, these monthly ones. So this is June 62, May 61, June 61, July 61. December 61, March 62, and April 62. So they're all very, very similar sort of size catalogues. Now this looks interesting. Order form for August 1958. Now I have at least one in this style, but I was having a look at the Penguin First Editions website and um, they've had some contributions and I thought, well, I know I've definitely got stuff that that ha that site hasn't got so what i thought i'm actually in the process of doing this i've got all my sort of penguin related catalogues and book muses and things like that and i've got it all together to put into new chronological order i think i'm probably going to end up bagging um some of this stuff up in like comic bags and little paperback bags to keep it a bit more rigid and i'm going to try and put it in chronological order and all the bits that aren't listed on that website I'm going to um, send some pictures through them, some scans. But this one folds out a bit more like a book, doesn't it? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, I remember my days in the book business in the 90s um, and early 2000s. We would always, we, we would just go through the publisher's catalogue with the reps. And um, literally anything we didn't have, we would, we would order generally. Now, this is a real curiosity. This is a little very, very thin this an exhibition is hoped that you will be able to attend able to visit the annual exhibition of penguin books which will be held this year at 13 portman square london w1 by the british color council 20th of november to the 8th of december admission is free underground is marble arch or bond street how absolutely cool now i think i'm trying to think when this is dated from i suspect it might be between 56 and 58 um because Penguin used to do exhibitions of their stuff and certain books would be put forward to like the, the National Book League, I think it was called, which would be like, yeah, for, to put books forward for, you know, great design and things like that. I mean, I have never ever seen something like that, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, how many have survived? I mean, I really don't know, but Paul, you amaze me with this stuff here. Now, here's some slightly larger versions of the ones that we saw. So this is Penguins, Pelicans and Puffins. Stock list from 1960. Oh, just, these are just magic. I just love them so much. Oh, look at that, the Pelican History of Art. That's a series and a half. I haven't got any of those. And some of the plastic reading cases, that's interesting. Red, green and blue. I think I've got a red one. God, they've even got an odd French one there that, from the second series of the French releases. Interesting to see they were still around. These, you can still get the baby puffins, the cutouts. Whew. Yeah, very, very nice. I have had a few people ask me if I could show my um, collection of puffin picture books. And I have got maybe 40 of the 107 that got released. Um, haven't got any of the baby puffins at all, but I'm happy to go through them. Got a few hardbacks um, as well. So um, I'll try and do those in a video, you know, in the next uh, sort of month or so. So that was August 1960. You, um, this is June 1960. This one, look, Ashcroft and Door, 83 Charing Cross Road. So that must have been the bookshop name, I'm guessing. And maybe the bookshop handed this out to customers and said, oh yeah, fill in what you want and bring it back to us and we'll order them, possibly. And there's no other markings inside, but lovely to have what I suspect is a book, bookshop information on. Same format again. Now this one's got some writing on. Um, I look, That looks like Robert. I borrowed film. We'll return it 
soon so and so don't know who that is ashcroft and Dahl again Look, maybe that was a member of staff somebody somebody borrowed a film well there you go <laughs> march 61 and this is i don't think i've seen any in this format before ever must have just been a short-lived sort of thing you know just amazing right so this is pretty early look at it 1954 December this is the same sort of format really it's a fold out oh look at that look at that that is gorgeous isn't it? look at that how lovely I mean I haven't seen that ever before I've never seen that image before wow that is really nice Wow. When was this dated? 1954. Look, it's, this was one sent out to a member of the public. Look, H.E. Robbins Esquire. 60 Widmore Road in Kent. Awesome. And then we've got a similar format again. This is why I think I've probably... I may not have these two, but I've probably got one or two in this format. At no, October 58. So concertina again, by the look of it. Lovely. Periodicals there. Bound editions. It's the hardbacks. The penguin prints. Never see those. You just never see them. Oh, look, the penguin bookshelf. War model in solid natural oak. Those are the ones which just look like shoeboxes, don't they? I think those ones. Wow. Well, Paul, absolutely, once again, you've absolutely blown me over, and I, I just, astonishing. They're, they're just amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, well, there you go, just awesome. Right, now we're going to go back to some more of the books. In fact, the books I got from Dorset Bob. So last time I visited with Steve, we had that first dibs at that incredible science fiction collection, which you've probably seen that video by now. And uh, most of these were from a collector who well he was so fastidious the way he kept his stuff and the books are just immaculate an odd one has a nick here and there so we'll just grab those as we go through and um but these are just this is like time machine books absolutely time machine books and uh and they're just astonishing literally astonishing <laughs> uh, crazy stuff so I was able to get some door, which I was very pleased with. Now I did notice these ones had a little bit of like paint or something on the bottom. So I'm going to sort of give that a, a good brush. We'll, get, we'll flick through in the usual way first of all. So this one here, you see that's come away there? So I'm going to get my Pritt stick on that. So I can... Uh, Glue that a little bit back in. This is uh, Marion Zimmer Bradley. And uh, Bob pretty much had her entire run there in door. She was a door stalwart, you could say. And uh, the doors really do have absolutely beautiful, beautiful jackets on them. But as I said, these had these little bits on the bottom here. I'm just going to give it a targeted brush now see if that gets them off I mean it's a very very minor thing for a book which is still absolutely mint and unread you know so I'm not going to worry too much about it <clears throat> Here's another one here. Two to Conquer, another dark over. What a great cover that is. Pound. This is another one. I had a little bit of white on the bottom there. I think it's probably where they've been stored. And it's caught maybe a little bit of paint or something like that. 
I think with enough flicking through like that, the paint will come off, even the, the other one over there. But because I believe this collector bought them all from brand new, um, they've got no, they've not been through the second hand system, so they're all pretty much as good as they were when they were first purchased, you know. Um, right now, look at this. So this has got once again, this has got a tiny fleck of the cover that needs gluing down. The Joan of Arc replay. Now, it's been a while since I picked up any door books, and I really do love them. I mean, I absolutely love them, but they are fairly tricky to find in nice shape. I mean, that particularly in the UK, they are around. All of them are around. Even the horror anthologies and things like that, you can you can find them, but you cannot find them in nice condition. That's the that's the tricky bit. So. Uh, Bear that in mind if you think, you know, you're looking to collect or they're far more plentiful in the States, of course. And uh, if you want them in nice condition, that's probably the place to get them, you know, is uh, get them from America. Right. Now, it wasn't all um, brand new books. This is from um, this may have been from the collection, actually, but I did pick up some other Philip Jose Farmer from Bob anyway. I went through his more traditional Jose Farmer stock and also his Isaac Asimov stock. It's another author I've been uh, picking up lately, but that is, that is still lovely. So I think that was from that, his mint collection. Uh, this one certainly was, Ranks. This is one of the Michael Coney's I didn't have. And I think these were all paperback originals, I believe. That one has actually got inside a price. It says 12, Twelve dollars. So, this must have been one that the collector picked up, maybe through a book dealer. Maybe it was one that he was missing. I suppose it's a reasonably early door. It's at number one hundred and seventy. I've almost got the first hundred complete now, without any gaps of door. Almost, um, and that would be quite a nice achievement to do. And I'd really like to to lick the first six hundred in total if I could, but. That's a, a bit more of a tall order. There's some tough ones in there, you know. But it's, uh, so these have got some paint on the bottom here again. So we get lots of, let's see if I can work it clean. I think we've got a little bit of it off there. like a paint or something like that on the bottom just stop with them being pristine you know but we got some of it there so that's okay here's um, dark over landfall um, number 36 I'm not sure if this is the first dark over one I think it might be I think we could perhaps check, can we? It'll probably say, look, look at the artwork. It'll probably say. Yeah, it doesn't mention any previous books by her there. I suspect that's the, the first one. And it's a real early, early door there. This is another Jose Farmer. This is a Ballantine. all right this is an upgrade a nice mint well virtually mint upgrade to the one that i've got so i picked up some of the gold books i got them all but uh they weren't all mint and this was a really nice example so look at that pretty pretty gorgeous isn't it pretty gorgeous it's a few more this was a ballantine uh, I didn't quite spot it at the time, but it has got a little um, sticker removal mark on the front. But it's such a bright and unusual cover. 
um, Terror in Needlepoint. I don't know what's going on there, but um, I love Ballantyne as a publisher. And once again, it's not one that you see loads of over here. Some of them definitely came over. In fact, I'd be tempted to say that a lot of them got imported, you know, um, at the time. But they've not all been saved. And uh, once again, over here, they generally don't turn up in tip-top shape. Whereas in the States, they do seem fairly readily available in nice condition. Except a few of the, the really, really collectible ones. Um, this is another great one here. I was very pleased to get this. And look at the condition of it. A beautiful, isn't it? This is illustrated as well. It's an early Bain. So it's published by... Uh, well, it's, um, Jim Bain presents... Published by Tor. This one's also got... Is that six pounds or six dollars inside? But it's absolutely immaculate, and I'm going to be having a real Jose Farmer binge quite soon. Um, but uh, yeah, it's great. Another one here. This is uh, the Berkeley Medallion Knight of Light. Now, I think I picked up two of these by mistake, but um, it wasn't the end of the world. A couple of different editions, and I didn't take the time to check them properly. It's my own fault, really, you know. Still very nice. So this is this is from '66. So I suspect this is the, the the original one, the first one, and I inadvertently picked up a later one. Now um, I've got these two. These are in the collection. These are the uh, New Worlds of Fantasy, and I and I did check my collection because I picked up volumes two and three, and I did already have number one. So that was really cool. So I'm very pleased that I've got the the set of the three of these now. And uh, Terry Carr is someone I've learned to really admire lately, and um, I don't know masses about him. I know he was a great editor, and he had a real eye for it, but he was also a bit of a science fiction writer in his own right. So, um, I might give him a try. Yeah, really nice, those. Um, this is cool. This was the American edition of the Black Hole movie adaptation. I've got the British one. Um, I do collect Black Hole stuff, and I've got a, a feral collection. I don't think I've ever seen this one in the UK before. I was just really pleased to get it. Um, and it is the uh, the first printing from December 79. Um, Bob had some really nice sort of movie tie-ins up there. I wish I picked them up. He had one for Krull. I think he had one for Excalibur and a couple others, so I do like the good I do like a good movie tie-in and a TV tie-in for that matter. Anyway, I think we need to make a tiny bit more room. Okay then, so the Stone God Awakens. This one's in the bag still. Oh. I have actually started bagging my own books now and uh Oh boy, boy, it's been making a great difference. I've really been uh, pleased that I've started doing it. Um, there we are. So this is uh, Ace. Jose Farmer. This is in lovely condition. Stone God Awakens. There we are, 1970. Oh, really nice, that one. Here's a, that other copy of Night of Light. So I have ended up doubling up this one. But that's okay. It may end up in one of my swaps videos. Get it out of the bag there. Yeah, I think this is just the slightly later version from the one that we looked at. Berkeley Medallion Edition 19... Oh, this is, yeah, this is the second from October 72. So I, I have got the first one there. All right, another Jose Farmer here. Stations of the Nightmare. Very nice. February 1982. This is once again from that collection, I believe. Got 
two dollars inside or two pounds maybe Alright, there's a bit of sticker there, so I need to remember to give that a bit of attention. The cash. Oh yeah, the SF Bookshop in Edinburgh. I'm going to leave that sticker on, I think. Yeah, I'm going to leave that on. Quite like things like that, little bits like that. Uh, here's another early Zimmer Bradley. And I shall make sure next time I go to Bob's, I've got my updated what door list. So I'm ready to pick up a few more. That's absolutely fine. This one's got a bit of that paint on the bottom again. Now it's starting to come off. September 77, that one. Yeah, I think that'd be all right. Just possibly gonna take a little bit more work on that. Another gore. This one, I think this is uh, March 83. So it's got a tiny little bit that needs gluing in there, so just like a corner nick. Seeing this corner down here actually. Don't know like what quite causes that, but we want them looking as nice as possible, don't we? And I was really pleased to get these. Um, it does leave me just one panther Asimov short, which is the one for I. It's not a panther, it's a digit. It's I, Robot. It's the only early one by him that I haven't got now. But it was originally a digit book, so I'd love to, I'd be happy to pay £20, £25 for it, because it is quite a rarity, and it's sought after. But I, it would need to be in this sort of condition. I'd want it to be really nice and uh, not unread, but, you know, just a really nice copy. Um, there is one up on eBay, which is £25, and it's fallen to bits. It's never really worth that. Um, but I don't mind... You know, paying a bit if you know if it's in half decent condition. You know, this is nice. Asimov's mysteries. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Just needs a, a good dust in that, but that's fine. The oh, last sort of wedge here. Now this is quite nice. This is Dark Voices, which is the first volume of it. And this one actually. Um, was the best from the uh, the best from the Pam Book of Horror Stories. So quite quite nice. So I think there's four in all. Bob's got them all. This is a reprint. So it's not mint. It's not uh, an original first, but it's, it is very very nice condition. So I'm pleased to have that one. Uh, this one was one which was signed New Terrors, edited by Ramsey Campbell, and this one had a dedication in it for Fiona, whoever she was. There's some good stuff in this one, some good stories. Yeah, I've got some uh, Stephen King there as well. And Christopher Priest. There's some good stuff in there. Red Orcs Rage. This is a, a tall one again. I suspect this is early 80s. No, early 90s. December 92, look at that. There we are, that's nice. 
nice. And more than fire. Not a lot of work to be done on these. They're just so nice, aren't they? Three dollars there. They really, really are. Tip top shape. That's how we like them. And we've got a few of these Dre Prescotts. Um, I mean, I'm not a huge, huge fan, but it's nice to have some of the ones I'm missing, you know? Um, I believe the series goes up to about number 35, something like that. So quite a lot to find. But I did pull some of the ones that I didn't have. really nuts and that's when that's sort of sums door up in one word doesn't it um crazy <laughs> but they did have some great stuff you know and the whole thing about door they're almost you know when you find them in really nice nick it's unusual but they're so with these yellow spines they really must have stood out back in the day um they really had an identity which unfortunately they lost you know they stopped doing it after about number 600 they, they just became like every other publisher, publishing science, fiction and fantasy, you know, uh, which is a shame. But there we are. The decision was evidently made and they went with it. Be and Tarries. Yeah, these are very, very nice condition. Just some of them have got a bit of dust on because they've been in storage for a while. That's fine. And some of them will benefit from a little gentle polish along the top, but a lot of these new ones are going to be fine. This is one of the ones from Bob's back stock, as it were. Get quite a bit of Asimov. And uh, I've been on the lookout for some of these for quite a while. There's another one where the, just the bottom of the uh, spine is there. I had to time my moment this afternoon, to be honest, to do the actual video. Because this morning, in the UK at the moment, we're going through lots of heavy rain. And um, this morning, the weather was absolutely awful. And I had to go out and walk my daughter's dog. So we got very wet and we got very muddy. Um, but he had a lovely time. <laughs> Which is all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice as well. I'm really pleased to get that. <clears throat> Last little pile here. The best of Isaac Asimov. Another great one to, to have. I've been quite picky with my Asimovs. I want them in fairly nice condition and they all need to be the British firsts, which is what I'm collecting. Whereas with Jose Farmer, I'm collecting the American firsts. Um, the rest of the robots. Another one which is pleased to see, 1968. I've had a real job picking some of these up. They just don't seem to be around. There's lots of Asimov online on places like eBay. You can buy them in job lots, you know, 10 bucks or 20 quid or even less. But they're just tatty, they're falling to bits. And, you know, the, the advantage of buying from somebody like Dorset Bob is you buy them from a specialist and they have standards, you know, and uh, you do get a little bit spoiled there when you... Uh, buy from anywhere else <laughs> it's great the Martian way it's lovely to get this one a bit tanned on the edges but we're not going to hold it against it I'm still pleased with that this one was bagged up it's got ten dollars on the back I don't know where Bob might have got this from maybe got it from America he used to do buying trips over there quite a bit back in the day foundation and empire i think this is the first copy of this i've actually ever seen in the original panther form so i was really really pleased to find it panther edition 1962 look at that so that's really nice that one very very nice indeed it's another one the hugo winners 
Um, Penguin did their own edition of this. Not this one, but different years, which was edited by Asimov. This was 1973 from Spear. This is the science fiction of Isaac Asimov, but it's not by him. It says, a, li a lively survey authorised by the master. But it's Joseph F. Patroch Jr., who I guess must have been an Asimov scholar. I'm suspecting. Published by Panther, though, so it must be pretty good. And the last one, <clears throat> before we start cleaning, is a another Dre Prescott. There we are, look at that, 1980. Awesome, right, well there we are. So that's all the uh, books looked at. Let's uh, give them a clean and a brush now. Okay, so we'll start brushing. And uh, I can't imagine we're gonna have too many tough brushes to do, but maybe some of those early handbooks and some of Bob's other bits might need just a casual brush. But on the whole, these books that are all brand new, not going to need hardly any, are they? It is like a, a, in a way, it's like a constant battle to keep your uh, collection looking clean and tidy. But I do feel by systematically going through and cleaning it all, and uh, I do do that over on my other channel, my dedicated book cleaning channel. So if you've not seen that, I do do uh, a video every week where I am systematically working my way through the entire collection. And uh, the end is still, unfortunately, not in sight. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing it for a while yet still. Bob is going to be taking all this mint stock to the London Paperback Show. I'm very much looking forward to giving him a hand and filming the show for anyone who can't make it, of course. Hopefully find a few goodies for myself. With a little luck. Certainly didn't do bad last time. I was very pleased with what I picked up. and uh, It's the the sort of show that there'll be books there for, you know, 50p or a pound a pop. So, you know, don't think you have to go along and have hundreds of pounds to spend because you don't. You really, really don't. There's lots of dealers there. There's the ephemera fair next door. So the dealers do have a bit of competition. So they don't want to go crazy on their pricing. Um, certainly last year, Morris from Zaros Books, you know, all you need is books. He just came along and filled up his entire stall with books at a pound each. And he was pretty much besieged all day. People were taking armloads of them. Because at a pound a piece, you can't go wrong. So if you are coming, be prepared for that. You definitely don't need to bring a stuffed wallet. To enjoy yourself. I think it's three pounds to gain, which isn't bad at all.
big piles of books here. Yes, it's been an absolutely terrible day for weather, but thankfully this afternoon the weather hasn't been like torrential. So uh, I doubt you've heard any rain on the studio roof. I've certainly been in here for a couple of hours and I've not heard anything. So that's good. The odd car going in the background, but not not bad weather. So that's good. Sometimes there's not a lot we can do when a car goes by. I suppose I could always move to the country. But I don't think I'd enjoy it. <laughs> wipe brush I should say to start the polishing and some will need a, a little bit more than others but we'll get those done now right so let's get polishing now some of these are going to need a bit some are going to need very little but we'll uh, treat each book as we find it said a lot of those ones from Bob so they're just they are perfection so there's nothing wrong with those at all I'm thinking more these sorts of ones the uh, older ones some of the older Panthers and that they're going to really appreciate from having a decent a decent clean before they end up back in the collection or before they join the collection I should say I feel a large shunting session coming on after the London paperback show. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done one. And uh, I might need to do a little rejig of some of the collection. But I have made some room by uh, getting rid of some of the toys, slowly but surely.
They're coming up quite nicely. You see that quite a bit of dirt on there. I'm going to just pop it on raw, as it were. See if we can get some of that up. It's not dirt, it's some um, fingerprints, you know, just handling really. That's what it is. It's fine. Yeah, same with this one. It is sometimes quite amazing what can come up. A little bit of elbow grease. And I suppose I've got, must be, I might have a hundred handbooks now. Possibly. Possibly. So, uh, I think perhaps a collection, I've never ever filmed them, so I think perhaps a collection overview for 2024 is now on the cards. I think I've got all the unusual ones and I've got the most collectible ones. There's a really nice one which is very collectible on scooters and I've got the uh, the missing Len Dayton that I was after. So I've got sort of the ones that are the most sought after, I suppose, by people who don't really collect all penguin but do collect, you know, sort of the better ones as it were. So, um, yeah, I think I might do that. Not 100% sure how much interest it'll have, but I'm sure it'll have some. Yeah, I really like these 60s uh, Chandlers. Very, very nice. I like all 60s Penguin books. It's just the look of the, of the books from that decade. Just great. Sometimes I prefer it to the early ones. For certain books, you know. Like the Ed McBain's, for example. They just look so good. The ones that were published in the 60s, they're just great. film this now it's sort of school pickup time I'm only a couple of streets away from a school and it, when the weather's all awful I think a lot of parents come and actually pick their children up so the uh, the roads all around where I live get pretty pretty busy around school kickoff time which is kick out time which is right now as we as we sit here filming this so you do hear the odd car This one was a little bit borderline, but I didn't want to not keep it, to be honest, you know. The Slimmer's Cookbook. I should be giving this close attention.
really do pick up the dirt in this particular era of handbooks. They really, really do. They're all a bit grubby. Sometimes get that odd little bit that's sort of scrunched into the, the cover, like a bit of dirt or something. Just sort of feeling it with my thumb. There we are. Lovely. Here's the Lynn Dayton. I don't know what I'd be saying to that woman. I'd say, go away, woman, I'm doing the spaghetti. You know? <laughs> Stop distracting me. You'll get your bolognese in a minute, I'd say. Ah, now the rolls are reversed. She's dishing it up. And he's just saying, I'd like a large portion, please. <laughs> now, these two picadors were quite grubby. Um, one thing I have noticed about picador, when they were published, of course, they were beautiful white spines, very, very colourful list. But these spines would have been pristine white. And they do colour up over time. Now, these are cleaning up, but... They're susceptible to cigarette smoke, which is a shame, but they just are. And also they can fade in the sun if you're not careful. So two things to watch out for with these. Well, that does look better than it did. And you can sort of see there, that there was the cigarette nicotine from the uh, the spine there. This was a later one, slightly later than my usual period, but it was cheap, so I thought um, I'd grab it. I I have I sort of look once every couple of months to see if any of the early books have turned up that I'm looking for from the first few years of Picador. Um, but you know they don't seem to. They just, yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe they just didn't have much of a print run, the very early ones, but that's okay. I'm quite, quite pleased with how that's come up. Nice books to read these. They really remind me a lot of the Virago modern classics. That sort of format, B format, of course, and uh, really good literary reads, you know, if you're in the mood for something like that which I sometimes am. Generally speaking, they've got excellent covers. Some of the early Ian McEwans are really good. Quite saucy for their time. Some of them. Now, I'm not sure how much of this yellow in we're going to be able to get off there because it's been uh, sun bleached sadly so it may be an impossibility but we'll give it a go see if we can get any of it off not really so you can sort of see what's happened here because this book has been in a big pile of books and you can sort of see the line 
sort of down there where it's been covered up. That's all right. It'll do, it'll do. There's no Ruth Rendell. Yeah, please to get this one. Another one, another crime band off the list. I still need about a dozen, I think. I have written up a, a guide to the series with a checklist for the latest issue of the Paperback Fanatic, which will be out probably about April or May 2024, the latest issue. So look out for that one. Always a good read. Sadly, won't be out in time for the paperback share. But yeah, I'm pleased with that. That's uh, a nice one, that. Now, this one, obviously, we can't do anything with that because it's got paper. Look at that advert on the back there. Bravingtons, the girl in white with a ring of gold. They advertised a lot on the back of the Collins, Collins books. The white circles. Ruth Rendell's now. Yeah, I'm really pleased with this. Like, it's, it's like a tenner for ten books, postpaid. And uh, I gave uh, about half of them to my mum. And she will pass them when she's done to my sister. So they're going to get a good use. And the really collectible ones, I'm keeping. Ha ha ha. Sold her many times in the past under Ruth Rendell and under Barbara Vine, her pen name. Sadly, suffered, I think, from dementia at the end. But my sister was a big fan, went and saw her talk, did a talk with her. So that she was fascinating to, to listen to. I bet she was. I bet she was. The bobs just need a very, very light going over. Possibly the odd mark here or there, but generally they're just minters. Mint beyond belief. Time machine books. Just the slightest signs of a bit of fingerprints, possibly handling wear, you know. That's tough to find because if it's all black cover, it's a tough one to find in nice condition. The 
that's as good as you're ever likely to find it. Very, very nice. Tiniest little bit of glue seeping out of the bottom there. But it's okay. We can live with it now. Get a clean bit of cloth now. We've just got these really nice mint books to go now, so I think we've probably done the bulk of the, the tricky, dirtier books, you know, the ones which have really picked up mess. And we're on to the uh, much nicer condition books now. Right, now I don't envisage these taking too much longer to get through because these are mainly, mainly minters, shall we say. So there's just a few to keep a little eye out for, which we shall of course do. Yeah, if anyone watching this has read through the Dre Prescott books, I would be interested to know what you thought of them in the uh, comments below. You know, just uh, is it is it really worth it? They must have been all right because they published so many, so they couldn't have been rubbish. I think this Alan Burr Ackers was was it? Um, what was his name? Was it Kenneth Bowman? Was Alan Burr Ackers? 
This one did have a little wear on it. Number seven. was quite dusty. Lovely. Tiny bit of fading on, spine fading on this one, but nothing too serious. Lovely. Another gorgeous one. A real slice of vintage SF there, so nice spine as well. Very, very nice. Indeed.
everyone. Right, I need to clear the decks again because we've got one more wedge still to do. Right, on to the last pile now. Once again, we get a fresh bit of fresh bit of cloth. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's uh, been science fiction and penguin heavy, you could say. But we did have a few old panthers and uh, those absolutely incredible catalogues from Paul. I mean, just astonishing. I really, really am over the moon with those. Um, so much I've never seen or even seen sort of listed or catalogued anywhere so that's a real project i think i'm going to pull all mine out fairly soon now and uh chronologically list everything in year order and uh, get it all photographed whatever is not online already on the uh, the penguin first editions website because there's a lot there that i think collectors are perhaps missing out on i don't even know exists and uh i don't know this pos you know point of sale and catalogues and that you wonder how much of it has survived. Certainly in the 90s when I was a book dealer, in the early 2000s, I saved all my Penguin stuff. Um, but even then there was a few I think I let go. I mean, I don't know why, looking back on it. But <laughs> I guess we all make the odd mistake. But, you know, if I'd have kept those, you know, they're like 30 years old now. Hindsight, eh? Yeah, I've certainly had a, a good time today. Don't forget that penguin wooden board that my uh, brother-in-law has made. He can do these to order, he can do anything you like. Uh, he has to sort of program it in on the computer. It is fiddly as anything. So they do take quite a bit of time to produce. And when they're actually in the machine, they take hours to actually do. But the results are stupendous. Is that the bit of sticker mark on there? Yeah, the results are amazing, as you've seen. So... Uh, I'm certainly going to get a few more of him. So if you are interested, maybe just drop me an email and I'll uh, put the two of you in touch and he can quote. But when I get a few more done, I'll certainly show them on here so you can see what they look like. So that had a real sticker removal mark there. Um, it left a residue, which I've got off with the old Mr. Sheen. The galaxy's greatest book cleaning polish, in my humble opinion. you adore 2024 collection updates so I'm going to see how I get on over the next few months with what Bob's got and what I might find at the London show and then I think I'll revisit the door collection and make a, one more concerted effort to at least try and finish the first hundred in the numbered series and then uh, we'll do a little door retrospective with a collection update which I'm sure will go down very well. All right. But yeah, I 
don't think it's it's been a long time since I picked up so many door in one hit. I must have picked up, I don't know, roughly 15 in, in one go this time around, which is amazing. 15 that I needed. Anyway, as we do these last few, it leaves me just to say thank you very much to everyone who's made it this far. Thank you once again to Paul for the amazing viewer donations, absolutely astonishing. Um, if you'd like to support the channel and help me bring these videos to you every month, multiple times a week, in fact, <laughs> um, do please uh, consider joining the Patreon or YouTube channel members. You can join from just a pound, you get your name in the credits, <sighs> lasting immortality, let's be honest. And uh, you get to see key videos like this one early. The same as the London Paperback Show videos, all of those sorts of things. My main ones are always released early to my uh, Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. So from just a pound, a pound a month. And it really does make a difference. And if not, don't worry. I want everything to be available for free. So even if you uh, don't want to join the patron, do please at least hit the subscribe button. So you uh, are growing the channel that way and it's telling YouTube you like what you've seen. I always welcome comments. All manner of collecting, so. Uh, There you go. But yeah, thank you very much for watching today. I've had a real blast. Just the sort of thing to do on a horrible, wet February day. To clean, clean some books. Yeah, thank you very much for watching today. And I shall, uh, See you again soon with another video. Bye.